has a little button here. I don't know what the point of that is. The colors are really great too. I'm glad they included all of this. But that was kind of disappointing. I think it's been a while since I reviewed a Nerf Blaster. It's all been Dart Zone stuff and X Shot. But today we're actually doing a review on the Nerf Elite 2.0. Oh, on the Nerf Elite 2.0 Lock and Load. A reskin that actually might be good. All right, so immediately what stands out about the packaging is that it looks more like traditional, it just reminds me of the old Nerf days where there'd be attachments and all kinds of other cool stuff. I miss those days and it's like an old school Nerf box. It just feels like a, the Nerf I, I'm used to and I'm so happy that it's kind of like that. But I think 30 would be a good standard price for this, but hey, 20, if you can get this for 20, pick it up because it has a lot of good attachments. This is a reskin of the Shadow ICS 6, which was a modulus blaster from the Ghost Ops line, which really cool. Let's get this open. Included is the blaster, two different barrels, scope, stock, 50 darts, and of course the instructions. Get those out of here. To assemble the blaster, you wanna take your stock, which is interestingly enough, a regulator stock reskinned, which is kind of weird because this is not a mag fed blaster. It's an internal mag, but like, where's the, where, why, why did you add a, a stock that can fit a mag? I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's cool. I mean, I'm just saying it's kind of odd choice, even though regular stock's one of the best. We have the barrel here, which I, it has a little button here. I don't know. It's like a grip slash barrel. I really like it, by the way. I believe this is a original piece. Correct me if I'm wrong. It has a little button here. I don't know what the point of that is. That's a it's kind of odd that there's a button here, but it doesn't do anything. And there's loads of tactics with this blaster too. Now we can add the scope and then they have this barrel here. All right. So a look at the blaster. First off looks, it's really good. It looks really cool. A lot of tactics. Also, I think it kind of, the scope kind of fits better on the side like this. There is a, an absolute ton of tactics on this blaster. Everywhere, you could literally go crazy. It has, I love this attachment piece here, uh, this barrel attachment with the grip. It's a brand new attachment. I miss the days where Nerf would include attachments in their blasters. The colors are really great too. I'm glad they included all of this. Uh, for a basic overview, starting with the grip, the grip for this blaster is very solid. One noticeable difference though between this and the shadow is that the shadow had a rev button of sorts, not a rev button, but you press it and it would glow because it was a clear blaster. However, this does not have that. So it actually makes a much more comfortable grip than the original Shadow. There's a sling mount right here and tack rail, tack rail, tack rail, tack rail, tack rail, tack rail, tack rails everywhere. This is a very tactical blaster. It was originally a modules blaster. The priming handle's up here and it works just fine. You have the foregrip here if you use the attachment point. It's a barrel extension actually, which is really cool. It doesn't seem to lock into place that easily, which I find kind of odd. I think that might have to actually do with his button. I'm not sure, but it's a really good grip foregrip and it makes the blaster totally comfortable to wield. The stock is great, of course, and it's of course interchangeable with other stock pieces. Same with the barrel. So that's really nice. To operate the blaster, take six of your fit included 50 darts, load them straight up in the top. It's an internal mag fed blaster, it takes six darts. Now hopefully this is better than the original Shadow because the Shadow originally jammed a lot and hopefully this doesn't break on me. I think I loaded all the darts in there, yeah. Then you want to prime and fire. It doesn't fire too well with the barrel, but if you take off the barrel, much better of course it does not fire well with the extended barrel but it's okay that's you know the barrels are mainly for show and tell this is a very tactical blaster it looks really cool and it fires pretty well i really like it, it has a similar priming style to the centurion one complaint i have so far is that the color of this doesn't match like any other Elite 2.0 blaster, which is a weird habit Elite 2.0 has when they make it blasters with attachments, it doesn't match anything else. 
These attachments are great, but they don't match anything else. However, I do love this color. And it's actually a lot nicer than the original shadow. It seems to work a lot more smoothly. Only way to really test it is to take it out to the range. So let's go do that. Alrighty guys, we're out here with the lock and load. Now I'm gonna be shooting this with the barrel off just for maximum range. And I, for some reason, can't seem to locate my range finder thing. So I'm probably just gonna have to do a rough estimation. Should be fine, but let's get started. All right, those were not impressive numbers, but that cat is impressive. Yeah, those weren't as impressive uh, ranges as I thought they would be. Pretty much the same as the shadow. A little bit disappointing. At the bottom, we have this Adventure Forest dart. The tip is kind of falling off, so that makes sense why it's down here. Over here, we have another dart at about 30-ish feet. Furthest dart at about 35 feet. Lowest elite dart is uh, 35 feet. Another elite dart at 35, that's 36 feet. And the other one is at 30-ish feet. I didn't see that. So yeah, the ranges aren't great. They're not terrible, but they're really not great. 35, 30 something feet. Very, very much in strike type ranges, which kind of sucks. Well, that was kind of disappointing. Obviously now uh, this blaster hasn't really changed much from its modulus counterpart. So it's about 30-ish feet. Is You're gonna get an average of 30 feet. And that's my make a play with this blaster, it's the performance. They could have tweaked the performance up just a little bit, but they didn't. However, there's a lot of good stuff to be had here. This blaster is very much like Jurassic Park 3. Uh, uh, several flaws, but enough redeeming qualities to keep it above average. It's pretty cool for what you get. You have a load of cool attachments that you can use. It has a great look to it, great colors. It's really nice, it's a bold, bombastic blaster. It has great attachments, like I just said. One big problem is that it's $40 normally. Now, I believe $30 to $40 normally, which is way overpriced. $30 is stretching it, but with the attachments, it's pretty much worth it. And $20 is a great deal. For $40, this blaster would be like a 5 out of 10. This is a good blaster for younger kids. I mean, it doesn't have as hard, it doesn't hit as hard which is actually a good thing in this case, and the Prime is pretty easy to use. It is a pretty fun blaster to go around and dry fire, but that's about it. I don't know the mod potential. One of you modders in the comments tell me what mod potential this blaster has, because I want to know. Uh, otherwise, the blaster itself, build quality-wise, is really good. It's very comfortable. It's very cool looking. It's very nice and sleek. Perfect for like, it's, you know, it's, it doesn't take up much space. It holds a decent amount of ammo with six darts. It's easy to load. To me, the performance could be better. All right, let's settle this. If you get this for $40, it's a five out of 10. If you get this for $30, it's a 6.5 out of 10. And if you get this for $20, it's a seven out of 10. There you go. I will have to edit all that in there. It's gonna suck. I would recommend it if you want the attachments or a pretty fun plinking blaster to kind of play around with. It's pretty fun. It has a lot of cool tactics. I'm sure there's some mod potential to be had there, but I imagine the internals are pretty darn complicated. It's better than some other Elite 2.0 blasters. It's better than the Modulus version, in my opinion. It's still really cool. It has enough charm to it that I think it's worth picking up. It's one of the better blasters of the year because of the attachments. Nerf bringing that back is really nice. Anyway, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Bye bye. Now I jump draw. Now I jump draw. So many things I don't know what they're for, but I won't let it go. No, I will add more useless little things to my jump drawer.